it's weird. <laughs> listen to this. Okay, so listen to the pump now when we just go key on and then listen to it after uh, I crank it. So I'm going to go key on and you'll hear the pumps. And then I'm going to go key on and crank it. And then as soon as I stop, you're going to hear the pumps continuing to run. And they sound different, which is weird. Ready? Listen. Hear that? Doesn't sound like it's ever getting, like, resistance buildup. I need to check fuel pressure. But listen to it after cranking. That is weird. I don't know boys, I wonder if it pushed the line off in the tank or popped one of those plastic lines or something, but uh, that's my, I don't know, that's the only thing I can think of. Um, and that sucks because it ran, I drove it in the garage and it was running last time when I pulled it in. So, I guess we need to go see if Chris is at Dino Edge and we can go order a tranny. I was hoping to drive this down there, but unfortunately... I think something's up with the fuel system. I got my um, kit here. This is gonna have my fuel uh, pressure tester in it. So we're gonna see if we got fuel pressure up here. See if it's working. Alrighty guys, so we're in the car. We got the fuel pressure tester up there. We're gonna go key on and see what she does. So exactly what I thought, no fuel pressure. Doesn't even try, so let's make sure that we have the Schrader valve and all that hooked up, but it should um, be hooked up right. So by Schrader, I mean I have this guy hooked up, which that's a quick disconnect. Kind of hard to screw up, and this guy just twists onto there. And that, as you guys can see, that thing in the center of it should depress. I know it's hard to see because my camera won't focus, but that guy should go inside of here and depress that Schrader valve. So, go ahead. Do it again. That's a quick Yep, just as I suspected. No fuel pressure. I didn't smell it. All right guys, so it's the next day. Getting back on topic with the car and the fuel system, let's go check it out. Uh, I'll show you guys what the problem was, what I did to fix it. It was pretty easy, and we're hoping this will last up until we get the bigger blower and the new fuel system, because if we go to a new fuel system, it's gonna be a new hat included with new pumps, and uh, we're gonna make our own AN line and all that, so if you guys don't know how to make AN line and do all that type of stuff, stay tuned, because we're gonna be doing that I think in the not too near future, I actually may get the fuel system ahead of time, get it installed, make sure it's working properly, get the car retuned um, with the stock blower and the fuel system, and see if that solves all our problems with you know even banging gears and that type of stuff. Because we're not gonna have to have the pumps ramp up and down and all that. The fuel's gonna be there all the time, ready to rock and roll. So let's get into this video, show you guys what it was. So here we are, we're gonna pull the fuel tank again. The bummer is it's full of gas. Like, literally all the way on the full mark. So this is gonna be fun. It's probably gonna spill all over the place and I'm gonna have a puddle of E85 all over the garage because I don't even know, I can't, without the pumps working, I can't just pump it out. Because what I could do is hook up to this guy and if the car ran and the pumps worked, hook up to this and then take the trader valve out of that and literally just have it pump and run while pumping it out, but now I can't do any of that, so I just have to make a mess. Yep. Now I gotta get the difficult bolt out. Yay, yay. 
Alrighty, so that bolts out. Obviously, the one over there I took out. And this one over here, it's hard to see right there, is out. So, we got all the bolts out of it. Now, we're just going to disconnect. Um, I don't even know if we're going to do that this time. Last time I disconnected these two. I think we can get it to tilt enough with these two connected. We'll see. We have to disconnect that electrical connector right there. And then, um, over here, we are going to disconnect these hoses going across here. At least one of them, so... lines up here um, this one we can just pull out and the other one is a push to pull out and we may do that I don't know yet I haven't decided we may just let it eat and leave it oh look at that sticky Ooh, yeah I definitely think we're gonna have an issue with it being super full because you guys can see over here this holds fuel up above everything else for the most part so I think that's part of the reason why these cars read full for so long like if you ever have you know, you drive your car and it reads like it's on the full mark all the time. It's because you have all that fuel that sits in there above all of this. So it just always reads full until that fuel drains. And then once it starts draining, then it starts reading. But that's a good probably three gallons right there, two or three gallons above. So, all right, so we're going to take this line off and hopefully it doesn't spray all over us and piss all over us. And hopefully it comes off easy as well. That's normal as to be expected. I'll just take it and set it up there for now. That's not leaking, which is, this is the part I was gonna try and put a hose on and siphon out of and see if we can get some fuel out of it. So what we may do is loosen the hat bolts. All of them, take them all out, except for like one over here on this side. So it holds it down and then slowly loosen it and see if fuel starts puking out of this thing. So let's do that. All right guys, two of my favorite, favorite tools are these. This is quarter inch drive, that one's three eighths. But, they work like dreams for doing this type of stuff. Uh oh. That's what I was afraid of, guys. Ooh, we're spilling the 85 everywhere. Oh, all over me, running all down the tank. Look at all that E85. So, obviously, when we loosened that, it was leaking. I went ahead and put that guy up there so that way we have it crisscrossed to keep it, keep it sealed. Okay hey guys, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to leave this on the corner there and I'm going to let it um, catch it and it's going to, it's kind of dirty in there so it'll clean it out anyways. So there we go guys, we got the big, big fat catcherino. Let's loosen it and let her drip. Hopefully, this will hold all the fuel that's going to come out of it. I hope it's not that much. So guys, it's pretty close. You can see I'm lifting the hat up and it's running out like that. So it's not leaking out of the front side of the hole. It's only leaking out of the back. Let me see if I can show you guys. So up under here, if I lift this up, you can see it coming out, but it's only leaking out of the left side there. Oh yeah. So that's a good sign. Holy crap, this is some good E, man. I can just burn in my eyes. Feel like I took a shot of whiskey over here, man. Woo! All right, guys, so all the bolts are out. We can lift it. Mother Teresa, look at all that. Holy cow, guys, that's a lot. That's the mother load of E, boys. Look at it all. Ah, there she goes. That's quite a bit of E, man. That sucks that I'm just wasting all that. We'll use it for the lawnmower or something. When we take the hat up out of here, too, it's going to be uh, easier. We may have to lower this some, actually, to get the hat out, which means we got more of the leaky leaky. We got some room. I don't know. Can you guys see that? We got a little bit of room there. 
We'll let it drain a little bit like this and then what I'll do is I'll raise it back up and then that should help too because then we're not gonna be spilling it and splashing it all out. All right guys, let's take the hat up and out of here. Now, whenever you guys do this, it's difficult. The um, float goes that way and it's always a pain in the butt in my opinion to get it in and out. As you guys can see, I'll show you, it did exactly what I thought it did. There she is guys, so check it out. This dude did what I thought and this Y is bigger than this part up here and I got the hose to fit the Y up there and so um, we didn't have it far enough on here so it just blew it off uh, from sitting in the tank and getting soft. So actually guys, now that this hose is softer, I think we're gonna be able to, we're gonna lube it up real quick, but I think because it's been sitting in the E, that's part of what happened, the hose softened up. I think we can get it. Oh yeah, that's a little bit further now than we've ever had it, so that's a good start. Hey guys, I'm happy with that. If you guys can see, because it sat in here and softened up, I could get it to stretch up over here. Now we're on all the barbs, I'm gonna put the clamp back on it right there, and we should be good, and I can stick it back in. So there she is guys, but now I'm 100% certain that this will work because before we only had it on one barb, now it's on multiples, it's stretched out. So let's go ahead and get it back in. Just so you guys know, it should go in really easy. You shouldn't have to fight this. It wasn't hard. Like you shouldn't have to fight this guy going down and sitting in his home. It should be very easy to get him to do that. So if this is your first time ever doing this, guys, if you've never worked on your car before fuel system-wise or anything like that and you have a problem uh, with your fuel system, what you wanna do is before you put the tank back up, leave it down like that. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna connect. We're gonna raise it up a hair. I'm gonna connect my feed line. So I'm gonna connect my feed line back here. See that, guys? That's quite a stretch, so. That line's maxed out and it won't reach. So we're gonna lift it back up to where we can get this line connected again. Then we're gonna go up front and check fuel pressure, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna have fuel pressure. Okay guys, I'm gonna go turn it on and I want you guys to stay here and look and you guys to tell me if it leaks when we go key on. Did it leak? Feels nice and dry around here. I think we're good, guys. Okay, as you guys could hear, you could hear the pitch of the pumps change. The first Keanu was like, me, And then the second time is like, me, And the third time was, me. That's how you guys know that it's actually making pressure. Now, we could do all the work and take my fuel pressure gauge out up here, and I could take it out and put it on the car and do that, but I know for a fact that it's going to work because we can hear it. I know it's making fuel pressure, and like I said, it made zero, zilch, nada. That was indicative that a line was blown off. If you get a hole in a line, it'll still make fuel pressure some, enough to where the car will usually run and lean out, and that's where you run into big problems because now you have a fuel line that has a hole in it, and it's leaking or bleeding or doing exactly what a regulator does and regulating, you know what I mean, losing fuel pressure, so. Let's go ahead and see if she fires up, guys. Before I put the fuel tank all the way back up, let's just make sure it runs. All right, as you guys can see, it runs. Sounds good, fired right up. So we're gonna finish putting up the gas tank. I don't see anything else dripping. I'm gonna review the video real quick, make sure there's nothing dripping out of there. Then we're going to clean up, jack the front end up because I want to do an oil change on this. It needs an oil change done and then uh, we should be good to go. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching it like always. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up button. Just go ahead and take that, take that wherever it is. 
smack that subscribe button and don't forget hit that notification bell so you know when my next video comes out so thanks again guys now get the heck out of here